For the first time in his presidency, Donald Trump found himself unable to tweet or post on social media yesterday. While Twitter lifted its suspension today, Facebook went the other way, banning Mr. Trump from the site indefinitely, something critics have urged CEO Mark Zuckerberg to do for a long time. Tonight, News 8's Abby Alford takes us inside the fight to stop the violence and hate from spreading on social media. Facebook and Instagram were the first social media platforms to suspend President Trump's accounts, but those that have been fighting for more oversight on social media say more needs to be done. It took a capital riot to silence President Donald Trump on social media. Words have meaning and um, calls for uh, violence and incitement on these platforms creates real world problems and that's what we're dealing with now. You're Matt Rivets is the co-founder of because, Sleeping Giants, you know, one of the organizations who helped create the Stop for Hate Profit campaign, persuading companies to stop buying online ads. He says social media platforms like Facebook and YouTube have relied heavily on free speech. It brings in more ad dollars for them and more engagement. And what also brings in more engagement is hate and conspiracy theories and disinformation. Last year, San Diego native Molly Salas says that she left her job at Facebook because of what she says was a lack of transparency. My chief reason for leaving was that I felt like I saw no end in sight where anything was going to get any better. Molly says that she and co-workers voice concern about Facebook not doing enough to flag disinformation. And she says the Capitol riots should not have happened. The way that that standard is applied is so improperly applied that I think that there's a lot of ways that it could have been prevented. Even before the Capitol riots, there was civil unrest, violence, hate. Activists like Rivets have been pushing for government regulations on social media platforms. I don't think a lot of people understood until then just how much these platforms are used by white supremacists to recruit to amplify and to monetize themselves. UC San Diego political professor Thad Kauser cautions that this could push radical groups underground. People moving from venues like Twitter to venues like Parler that are gonna be more of an echo chamber and perhaps more dangerous and threatening. Here are four ways that you can spot disinformation that's intentionally misleading content. First, be skeptical, check the source, also find out when it was created and why it was shared. 